Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another episode of FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff. This is episode 285. That's a lot of questions. But you know what? We're going to keep that question train rolling. And we're going to get to some questions right now. iPad ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Consider the uncanny valley of sound in the latest of guitar amp sims. Um, okay, so let's explain what the uncanny valley is, Ron Rich. Okay, so the uncanny valley is often used to describe um, VFX and animation and human um, CG realism. And you can graph and chart an uncanny valley uh, and, and from left to right is unreal and right is real. And there is a projected valley where your brain will know that that person or thing or pet or animal isn't real. And also you don't, it takes you out of the experience in a negative way, right? So all the way to the left, you're watching a cartoon. Obviously, you know, that's not real. So you're going to, you know, the suspension of disbelief of it's okay for them to stretch and be all cartoony. That's fine. And then you get into the CG realm, you're watching Transformers and you're thinking, they don't move like that. Like what? Anyway, I'm getting way off track. Taking that into guitar amp sims, where in the uncanny valley are some guitar amp sims? As far as this doesn't feel right or sound right, but I don't know why but I know I don't like it. Um, hence why this is a great question. Um, the uncanny valley of sound in the latest guitar amp sims, I think for me is the mobile, the mobile device amp sims. They, they just don't have either the horsepower, like the devices currently don't have the horsepower to allow the resolution and processing, the audio processing to be more realistic. Some of them are pretty good and some of them are not. Uh, I'm not gonna specifically name names, but I think a massive percentage of mobile based guitar amp sims are in that uncanny valley. Thoughts on buying an Evertune bridge and permanently modifying your guitar or spending an extra couple hundred bucks and buying a guitar that has an Evertune pre-installed? That's a great question. Um, what I tell people is they need to evaluate the situation and the use for the guitar. Um, having been a former artist rep for Evertune, I can tell you that if you screw up that installation, there is no wiggle room at all. You will have a dead guitar and a ruined guitar if you screw up that installation at all. You will kill the sustain. It will just, it will be a terrible guitar if wh whatever installer is, is installing that uh, bridge screws up even just a little bit. Like the tolerances are so tight. So if at all possible, spend the money and get a factory equipped Evertune guitar. The LTDs are awesome. Uh, the Schecters are awesome. Um, there's a lot of options now. There wasn't a few years ago but uh, you can even get ones, authorized ones right off the Evertune website. But I would say when possible, get a guitar that already has an Evertune installed and working properly. That way you just don't have to worry about wrecking a guitar potentially. Favorite amp sims at the moment, as well as IR packs. Uh, favorite amp sims, sims at the moment. Um, I've, I'm still using my own Amped Roots plugin. I'll link down below, shameless plug. <laughs> but um, the STL Amp Hub is great. And the Neural stuff, all of the Neural stuff, uh, the Neural DSP Nolly is fantastico. Um, the Obsidian, the Omega, the Granophile, Grano, Grano, Graphite, I don't know. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but the Obsidian plugin, that's great too. Those have been very, very good. As far as IRs go, uh, the Jens Bogren IRs are phenomenal. If you guys saw, I'm gonna reference the Dragged Under live stream again. The 
Jens Bogren IRs are what we have in our Helix, and uh, they sound phenomenal because they are made and captured and processed to be on modelers and digital processors like the Fractal, the Helix, and the Kemper. Uh, they just sound phenomenal. So, yeah, the Jens Bogren IR pack is mwah, so good. Five variables to a good guitar tone before the mic, five variables to good guitar tone after the mic in the DAW. Go. Jeez, that's a lot of variables, but there are a lot of variables. Okay, pre-mic, fresh strings, your, your, your string life, um, your playing. Your playing is gonna have the largest impact on whether you, you sound good. Uh, the, see, it depends on the situation. Okay, your amp. Your amp is in good order and maintenance. Noise, noise gate, grounding, ground issues when you're plugged into it. Um, are you boosting or not? Are you causing more noise? Uh, tube, are your tubes good? Um, and, Pre five, I gotta think of a fifth one. Your cables, I, I, I guess. Uh, or no, actually no, your um, your speaker cap. Is your speaker cap awesome? Is everything running at 100%? Okay, that's that's pre-mic. Signal coming out of the out of the speakers into the mic and then um, mic placement, one. Two, uh, mic preamp that you're going into. Three, uh, cable quality. Cable quality is a big deal. Uh, four, converters. How does your interface sound? Does it sound good? Does it sound bad? Are you using a preamp or are you just going straight into your interface? Uh, and five, listening environment. If you're gonna be mixing and listening back on those on that mic guitar sound, you better be listening on an accurate source because you don't wanna actually make it worse and not know it. Ha <laughs> ha, got them all. Who do you take inspiration from when it comes to writing the fantastic riffs for Dragged Under? It's a great question, Nathan. Um, I cannot take all the credit for writing all of the riffs on Dragged, for Dragged Under. Uh, Dragged Under is very much a collaborative effort. So for the World Is In Your Way record, it's literally, oh, this is a cool riff. Oh, oh, give me that guitar. Um, you know what would be cool after that? And then Josh would, would take the guitar or Hiram, our producer would take the guitar or Tony would take the guitar and add to that. And it would literally be puzzle pieces and you just kind of make the riffs and make them tie and then uh, maybe that and then oh well I want a vocal there so we're gonna make some room and we're gonna add a middle section etc etc it is very 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 rarely oh here's a complete song it's never like that ever with us uh, and I think it works uh, we have recorded the music for the second Dragged Under record and it worked the very much the same way, except now we have like, you know, our bass player Hans is, uh, has a, a degree in music and music theory. And so he like, he lends a lot to, you know, oh, I'm trying to harmonize and oh, go to a C sharp or go to, you know, he, ad he adds a ton of music theory and knowledge to the overall situation as well as being incredibly handsome and a very, very great player at Piano, cello, guitar, bass, and just about everything he wants to play. Um, so yeah, it still works that same way though. It's very collaborative and it is a bunch of different ingredients in a melting pot, stirring it around. And having said that, everyone has their own influences. I am like, you know, Stone Rock, Mastodon, Ghost, but I also really love like Comeback Kid and Rice Against and like the 90s Fat Wreck stuff. Uh, Tony loves cave in and like you know heavier stuff but he also really really loves some 41 and jimmy world and then hans likes literally everything um so you have all of those influences coming together and really now it's more about how do we want to make how would do we want something to make us feel when we play it as opposed to what we're actually playing if that makes sense want to talk about gibson sgx's okay so back in the 90s uh, Gibson had a couple weird runs. They had an SGZ, I believe, and then an SGX. And these were like $700 USA Gibson SGs. And Tom from Bigwig played a couple of them as well. Like he bought a couple of them for a couple of tours. And they were awesome. 
and they aesthetically were awesome. The colors were awesome and you could get them cheap. You could never ever find them though. They were only around, I think for like a year or two, honestly. Uh, but they were sick and I should try to find one. Not to get caught up in genres, but what genre would you consider dragged under? P.S. Sorry if this has been asked before. Um, we prefer to ourselves as punk pop because that's kind of what we are. We're not pop punk, we're punk pop. So we will take the faster, aggressive, riffier stuff and put a put some some nice shiny sing along melodies on top of that as opposed to the other way around. So yeah, you can call us whatever you want though, as long as you're like. I mean, yeah, as long as anyone is giving us any attention at all, that's totally fine. You want to call us anything you want, do it. How do I get over feeling what I write is consistently bad? Seth, that is a great question. Honestly, stop comparing yourself and your, your stuff, your music to other music. Do it, do what makes you happy first and foremost, honestly, that's the only time you were ever gonna get fulfillment out of even what you're doing. And that's the whole point anyway, is it not? Um, take breaks, clear your mind, do what you think is cool, and then always try to up yourself. Don't try to up anybody else. I mean, cause the feeling of it being bad is centered around, oh, well this isn't as good as what whoever is doing, right? Normally, uh, at least that's what I do, so always try to up yourself. Don't worry about anyone else, man. Stay in your lane, head down, and just uh, just try to kick your own ass. It'll happen, relax, breathe, drink some coffee, get to work. And that does it for this episode of FAQ Monday. If you have a question, feel free to leave them on down below in the comments or go ahead and tweet at me. I'm pretty active on Twitter lately. I don't hate it as much as I used to, but I mean, I hate it a little bit still. You've been wonderful, I've been fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, please consider subscribing. It helps me help you. And then in turn, you get more stuff to watch. And also I have all sorts of stuff down in the description of this video. Sweetwater giveaway stuff. There's all sorts of links to all sorts of things. So consider uh, checking that out as well, if you're gonna hang. But if you don't hang, all good. I still love you.